Good afternoon, Johan. Hey, Ryan. So we've seen we've got some... Uh... Yeah, I'm making some lunch. I've got some rice here. I just made some ghee because that's nice with the rice afterwards. It's a thousand times healthier than butter because it's a real nice nutty flavour. I've got some beans here that I've cooked. These are really nutritious and very tasty. They've been cooking for a while. So yeah, that's our lunch coming up in about half Fantastic. an hour. Fantastic. This yeah. is the food of champions. Food of champions. Um, we were talking earlier, actually, you were telling me about yeah. So you work with a lot of business leaders, a lot of high performance athletes, yeah. helping them perform at the very sort of top elite levels. Yeah. What kind of, in your experience, like what, how do people get that way? How do they, can you give an example of somebody that you've worked with? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you, first of all, I, I came up with this list not long ago. I get asked this question a lot, right? What are the top qualities that champions have that others don't have? You know, because you know, we're all watching TV and looking at these great champions. What, are the, what gets them there? What separates them from the crowd? And I've always, I've always been passionate about this question, actually. What makes a man different to another man? And I came up with a list of six. And the first one on there was, you've got to have it in your belly. You've got to have that hunger to reach whatever it is that you want to reach. You've got to have that hunger because that hunger will drive you through all the ups and downs together. You can't borrow that hunger from outside. Uh, so <clears throat> if I look at, for instance, a rugby, a world-class rugby champion I'm working with right now, he's had that hunger since he was a kid. And he was born in tough circumstances and he had a hunger to succeed. And that hunger has driven him to being captain of a national team for two seasons. And one of the greatest in his, in his league and uh, you just feel that when you're with him. There's a hunger there. Now, what that hunger is driven by could be good things or bad things, but it doesn't really matter. The hunger's there. Yeah? So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing that I know this is that athletes who are looking to get their feel good in life from their win are doing it the wrong way around. You've got to bring the feel good to the game to get the win. So in other words, one's self-esteem has to be separate from one's results. So if you're looking to, feel, to get your feel-good factor from your next win, um, you got to do it the wrong way around. You're looking, you got to, you got to feel good already. That's a state of being. Right? Mm. And then bring that state of being to your doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely important. Not just for athletes, businessmen, everybody. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a sickness in our society. We got to do it the wrong way around. Do you have an example of that? Uh, well, uh, totally. I mean, you just look at, uh, for instance, footballers. You know, you, all you have to do is switch on the TV and you look at the footballers and you look at how upset they get when they miss the penalty. Right? And we know, everybody knows that that guy who missed the national penalty, you know, with the, the national team at number one, he, he missed the penalty shot, the team's now at number two. Everybody knows, everybody knows who's watching on TV, knows that that guy's going to take four or five months before he, he scores another good goal. It's going to be playing in his head for four or five months. Yeah. Yeah. So he's looking to feel good from his penalty, and if he misses, he feels bad. Penalty is a penalty. Feel good already. Yeah. And the chance, of course, of reaching the penalty, if your feel good factor doesn't depend on the penalty, you're probably in better shape, right? Right. There's not that much risk associated with it. Personal, deep internal risk. This comes from childhood stuff. Right. Yeah. Actually, if those were the only two I gave you, that's massive already because that's all the insight. The other thing is, they know, uh, they know that their success comes from the inside out. In other words, they've conquered themselves. Champions have conquered themselves first before seeking to conquer others. It comes from the inside out. Yeah? And you know, I know we've had these conversations before. We know that our ultimate competitor is not the guy out there, mm -hmm. not the next company, not the next whatever business or, or, or sports you're in. It's your own personal um, gap, yeah? your own personal potential that's right. your greatest competitor and if you were to compete against your own potential in other words look to maximize it you don't have to worry so much about the external competition what does it look like to compete against your own potential on a on a daily basis well i'll give you i'll give you actually better than that all right i'll give you an example of an athlete i worked with who was a top gymnast and he was looking to defend the sixth national championship in a row that would have put him i think yeah, definitely in the guinness book of records and he came to me because he was really really low and uh, in deep trouble and he was in, in his mid-twenties now, and his competitors for this national championship were in their teens. And, uh, and, and 
his confidence up to then was great, but when he looked at them, he figured that they were fitter than him. And that got into his head, and it drove him nuts. He couldn't sleep at night, couldn't keep his food down properly, worried sick. The, the, the desire, the hunger that I mentioned earlier on was still there, so this guy was massively conflicted, massively frustrated. We worked together, and we only worked with him for two days. I was away on a trip, and his meeting was before I got back, so we only had two days. But what we did in those two days is we changed his way of thinking that now his competitors are not the young whippersnappers, but actually his potential. And I asked him, if you, you know, have you reached your maximum potential? He said, no, there's at least another 20%. He said, if you were to play inside that 20% during the competition, do you think that would be a superior performance to these other guys? He said, by far, because I have eight years more gymnastic, professional gymnastics as a gymnast. Uh, un under the belt. So we played in that potential only one hands now. Not only that, he went to, to the Commonwealth Games a year and a half later after his retirement and won gold medal. Amazing. Yeah, because he was playing within his potential. The outside world didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Of course, he's informed by it, but he's not given by it. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. The other one, so the other one, of course, is that, that unshakable self confidence. In other words, they have the ability to bounce back and to stay determined in the face of adversity, criticism, defeat, accidents, whatever, uh, because they have learned to reframe all those events to their advantage. This is a great skill. And so those are some of the qualities that top champions possess. Amazing, thank you. Uh, you're welcome.